one of the most important things to think about Bangladesh as a country is how vast and how dense its population is. So as a country, it has about half the population of the United States, about 160 million people, but that's in the size of Iowa. Since its independence in 1971, Bangladesh has grappled with severe poverty, hunger, and malnutrition. 40% of its people live below the international poverty line of $1.25 a day. The country is particularly vulnerable to natural hazards and climate change. Between 25% and 75% of Bangladesh is hit by flooding each year. This has a compounding and sometimes devastating effect on some of the more than 80 million people who work in the agriculture and fishing sector, roughly half the country. It also threatens the food supply for many Bangladeshis. In 2009, the World Food Programme reported that 60 million citizens in Bangladesh were food insecure. While the challenges are great, the country has shown significant progress on some fronts. Rice production has tripled in the last four decades, and Bangladesh has had consistent national economic growth at around 6% over the past 10 years. The government has also long shown leadership and a commitment to policies and resources to curb hunger, poverty, and malnutrition. The United States has become a global leader in addressing these issues, particularly through its food security and nutrition initiative called Feed the Future. Bangladesh is one of 19 Feed the Future focus countries. Its program was launched in 2010, when Feed the Future began. It was chosen not only for its needs, but also for its potential for improvement, where the return on aid dollars could be maximized. The initiative's geographical zone of influence, where investments are concentrated, is home to more than 27 million people. There are now more than 30 Feed the Future projects in Bangladesh, with an annual budget of more than $50 million from American taxpayers. The focus of the projects ranges from increased agricultural production, improved market linkages and communication between suppliers, farmers, and sellers, to improved dietary and nutrition practices. Many of these areas are simultaneously supported by investments and policies at the national and local levels. Together, they aim to reduce the prevalence of poverty and stunting by 20% by 2017. Earlier this year, a team from the Center for Strategic and International Studies, led by its director for the Global Food Security Project, Kimberly Flowers, traveled to the South Asian nation. Well, the reason we were in Bangladesh uh, was to look at the U.S. government's Feed the Future initiative and to see its progress, its challenges, and just to get a quick snapshot and to provide some policy recommendations of how perhaps it could be improved. The team talked to various project and government officials, and perhaps most importantly, program beneficiaries themselves, including Runu Arani Mandal, a 35-year-old mother of two. <laughs> Mandal is part of a Feed the Future project called Agricultural Value Chains and grows her crop on the banks of aquaculture ponds, improving dietary diversity while maximizing real estate in an area where available land is scarce. There's been a significant amount of progress, not that there isn't still some room for improvement, but in Bangladesh alone, there have been about two million farmers that are now um, improving their practices or, or utilizing new technologies to increase their production. The Feed the Future programs employ more sophisticated agricultural practices to help farmers access high quality seeds and fertilizer, improve their yields, and increase their incomes. In Kulna, at an independently owned fertilizer store, deep placement fertilizer briquettes are produced for local farmers. So far, 640,000 farmers have been trained to use the briquettes as part of the Accelerating Agriculture Productivity Improvement Project, and a million and a half have used them in practice. The briquettes increase rice yields by 18 percent, use a third less fertilizer than other methods, and reduce negative environmental impacts, all while saving farmers money. The advanced techniques employed by Feed the Future programs also include the use of high-tech, 
linking farmers with other stakeholders in the production chain. That means working with maybe a retailer network or working to expand um, services to link into the, um, the public sector and their extension services through using new technologies like mobile apps and mobile phones. Um, we saw a lot of that. When you see a smallholder farmer take a picture with their phone of their crop with some new disease on it, they don't know what it is, they send it off to the extension services and they can write them back to say, here's the problem, here's what you need to do to correct it, and then they can go to their local retailer who's also been more informed to make sure they can get the right product and services to fix their crop. Drones have also been employed. Earlier this year, the eyes in the sky were used to help farmers and scientists alike assess how far a devastating fungus, known as wheat blast, had spread and provided a quick snapshot of the damage. Back on the ground, USAID is also contributing to hard infrastructure to improve farmers' access to markets by rehabilitating many rural roads with high-quality construction and environmental standards. Despite all the improvements from Feed the Future and its partners, challenges remain. While rice production output has increased substantially in recent decades, other crops have not kept up. More than three-quarters of the country's farmland is used for rice growing. That lack of crop diversity contributes to the country's nutrition problems. The average Bangladeshi still gets nearly three quarters of their daily calories from rice. And if you're receiving most of your calories from white rice, you're not getting the kind of vitamins and minerals that you need to be healthy and productive and grow. Malnutrition levels remain persistently high in Bangladesh, even though the country is experiencing economic growth. Less than one-fifth of Feed the Future's budget in Bangladesh is targeted towards fighting malnutrition. When you look at the overall portfolio, even though there's sort of a 50% breakdown in the overarching goals of reduction of poverty and reduction of the prevalence of stunting, you don't see that kind of breakdown in the sense of the programs or the percentage of funding that's going into those two buckets. So we'd like to see a better balance between nutrition and programs focused on agricultural production or markets. One program simultaneously aimed at fighting malnutrition and poverty is the Aquaculture for Income and Nutrition Project. Since launching five years ago, the program has reached more than half a million households and generated substantial improvements in profit margins for carp and shrimp. Badal Krishna Saha is an assistant fisheries officer in Kulna. With years of implementation under its belt, Feed the Future is now taking stock of its accomplishments and challenges to chart a course for the next five years. In September, the CSIS team released its report on Feed the Future Bangladesh, including recommendations to inform the new strategy. But I do think now is exactly the opportune time as everyone's thinking about the new strategies, looking back on what's worked in the last five years and how do we tweak things to move forward. What this report can do is provide policymakers, both in the field as well as in Washington, a good snapshot of, of what's happening in that country, but most importantly, some really actionable analysis and concrete policy recommendations of ways that could be improved. I think overall there's a lot of great things to say about especially the leadership in both the government of Bangladesh as well as the U.S. government. And in Bangladesh we saw that the quality and the caliber of USAID staff was, was exceptional as far as their strategic thinking and their collaboration and communication amongst each other and with partners. Also the government of Bangladesh is a very good development partner. I think for some of our recommendations, and I definitely encourage people to read the report to get into more technical depth, we really feel like there needs to be an expansion both of nutrition programs as well as funding that goes into that. We think they could better leverage USDA expertise. There could be a greater extension into financial services. Also think that they need to better temper their claims of what their impact numbers are. So another recommendation that we would have is to reduce the burdensome reporting requirements that partners have in terms of monitoring and evaluation. Well, we'd like to see more transparency. It's very hard to figure out the data as far as where the funding flows are coming from, from Congress to fund Feed the Future as well as other government initiatives. Um, there's not enough clear data that's easily accessible to the public so that we can easily say this much money is going here or there or there. Bangladesh is often touted as one of the most successful Feed the Future countries in terms of impact. There are good reasons for that. 
it has a strong development partner with the government of Bangladesh, which has demonstrated its commitment to reducing hunger, poverty, and malnutrition. USAID staff and its implementing partners are dedicated, flexible, and collaborative. Bangladesh has set an ambitious goal to achieve middle income status by 2021. Key elements of this plan include generating jobs and adapting to climate change. Feed the Future's work on productivity and trade in rural markets supports this country-led development. These collective efforts, strengthened by a growing focus on nutrition, can make a meaningful impact in the lives of millions of Bangladeshis for decades to come.